What's up guys, I'm Puneet from Programmers and welcome back to this series on programming with Python. In this video, we will learn to take input from the user and store it in a variable. Let's get started. In the last video, we learned to create variables so that we can store data and use them later in the program. Let me give you an example quickly. So I'll go to my compiler and I'll say name equals Felix and I can say print name. Now when I run the code, as expected, Felix is printed to the screen. Now if you're a skeptic like me, you must be thinking, this is pretty useless, right? In the real world, we will typically ask the user what their name is instead of putting it ourselves. Let's see how we can do that. To take input from the user, we use Python's input function. So I'll replace this Felix by the input function and this time when I press run, then Python waits for me to input something. Here, I'll type Felix as before, and when I press enter, then I get Felix back. Let's try to understand what's happening here. When I pressed enter, then whatever I had typed, that is the string Felix, is stored in the variable name, and on line two, when I print name, then that the value of that variable name, which is Felix, is printed back. This program to take input from the user is working correctly. However, we haven't provided any clue to the user on what to enter. Let's change that. As we're trying to ask the user for their name, inside the input function, I will type enter name. And when I press run, then this time Python gives me a hint on what to enter. So I'll say Felix as before. And when I press enter, then this string Felix stored in the name variable and when I print the name variable, it gives me back Felix again. Before moving to the next section of the video, I'd like to mention that the Programmist team has created an app that allows you to learn Python from your phone. The app contains bit-sized lessons that are easy to understand, a built-in interpreter so that you can run Python on your phone, quizzes and many more features. The app is available on both iOS and Android. The links are in the video description below. Now instead of a string, let's try to take a numeric input from the user this time. Let me modify this program. So I'll replace name by number and obviously replace the variable names as well. And now when I press run, then this time I'll enter a number five. As expected, five is printed back to the screen. It's that easy or is it? Well, the input function takes the input in the string form when we enter 5, rather than the integer 5, the string 5 is stored in the number variable. We are getting 5 without quotations because the print function always hides the enclosing quotations when we print a string. We can know for sure it's a string rather than a number by using the type function. The type function returns the type of a variable. Inside the print function, I'll wrap the number variable by the type function. And this time when I press the run button, then it says enter a number and when I press five and press enter, it says class str. Let's see what we get when we print the type of integers and floats. I'll remove this code for now and I'll say number one equals five. And here I'll say print type of number one. Let me create another variable number two and this time I'll say 5.5 5 .5 and I'll say print number 2. Now when I press run, then it says class int and class float. Here number 1 is an integer and number 2 is a floating point number. That is why when I run the code, you can see that we get class int first, which is representation of the type of number 1 and we get class float second, which represents the type of number 2, which is a floating point number. Let's get back to our original code of taking numeric input from the user. We still haven't solved the problem of taking integer and float input from the user. In fact, it's not possible to take integer and float input using the input function. However, what we can do is convert the string to a number after we take the input. In this code, after I take input from the user, I will add a line to convert the string to an integer. So here I'll say number equals integer number. And now when I press run, 
Then it says enter a number, I'll enter something like 5 and it prints 5 but I have no way of knowing whether it is an integer or not. So here I'll wrap this number by type and this time when I press run, it says enter a number, I enter 5 and it says class integer which verifies that number indeed is now an integer. In our code, instead of adding this extra line to convert the string to an integer, you can also do something like this. So I'll remove this code and I'll add wrap this input function by the int function in the first line itself. Now when I press run, then as usual it says enter a number, I'll enter 5 and the class int verifies that indeed the number variable is now an integer. Here we're taking input from the user, converting it to an integer and then storing it in the number variable all at once. We can also convert strings to floats. We use the float function for that. Let me change this code and instead of integer, I'll use the float function. So here I'll replace the int function by the float function and when I press run, then I can enter something like 5.5 and it says class float which means this input was converted to a float and that floating point number was stored in the number variable. When we pass values we have taken from the user to int and float functions, Python tries to convert the data to its corresponding integers and floats. In our programs, we have converted the string 5 to an integer and the string 5.5 to a float. These are numeric strings, numbers in string format. That's the reason it's possible to convert these strings to integers and floats. However, Python cannot convert every string to numbers. Let's find out what will happen if we try to convert a non-numeric string to a number. So here I have the same code from before and this time I'll press run and when it says enter a number, I'll enter a string like Felix. When I press run, then Python tells me that it could not convert string to float. Here Python tried to convert Felix to a floating point number but obviously it couldn't which makes kind of sense. There is no way for Python to know what's the equivalent floating point number for this Felix string. Before we end this video, here is a recap of what we learned. We use the input function to take input from the user. We can make the input function more descriptive by passing a string to it. The input function always takes the input in the string form. But we can convert a string to an integer using the int function. Similarly, we can convert a string to a float using the float function. If we try to convert non-numeric strings to integers and floats, we will get an error. That's it for this video. I hope you learned something. If you're just watching the video without writing any code, I highly encourage you to try the programs in this video on your own. The only way you can be a good programmer is by trying. By the way, you can find all the programs from this video on GitHub. I posted the link in the description below. Feel free to copy the programs and edit them as you please. And if you have any questions and feedback, use the comment section below. Join me in this video series and let's explore the exciting world of programming together. In the next video, we will learn about Python comments and why they are used. If you like this video, hit the like button now and also don't forget to subscribe to our channel and ring that bell icon so that you don't miss the next video. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Happy programming!